Hello there, my name is Sebastian and today we're going to be discussing if and else sentence for C Sharp for console application purposes. So let's get there straight into it. Now the first thing I want to do here is to write out console write line as we discussed last time. So it will say enter one or anything else. And it will put that into our int called numbers. And then of course as we discussed last time we will convert it into int format and then we'll, it will take the number and put it straight into that. So we put in a number and then put it into the int called numbers. Then we go down and say if numbers is the same as one. Okay, that is what this means. That is why there is two equals. We could also go if it is anything else then, if it is different than one. We want to check it if, it's, if it is equal to one. And then it'll do whatever is in these brackets right here. And if it is equal to one, it will say console it will say that was one. Now, if it is not as in else, it will say that was not one. And it will, again, it'll do whatever is in these brackets. Now in these brackets as well, you could put another if sentence if you so wished. So if you were looking for if it was equal to one, and then you could say if uh, the words were equal to hello, then it will do something different. Uh, I'm not going to do that right here, it's a bit more advanced. All you need to keep an eye out for is your brackets if you're trying to do double ifs or double else. Now, we go down and we do the same, but for letters as in a string. So it goes down and says, console write line, and then it goes write A or anything else. And then we take uh, whatever we put in, convert it to uppercase, as I discussed last time for checking it, and it puts it into the string called words. Now it goes down and says, if words is the same as and then in quotes a you might notice the difference here that when we are checking for words we put it into quotes i don't know the specific reason for that i just know we do that <laughs> this is how it works sometimes that's just how it works okay so you just put every word or every letter into quotes when checking them in f sentence so if words is equal to an a so if we put in an a it converts it into uppercase, that's why we're checking for uppercase. So even if you put in a lowercase, it will still check for uppercase and it will still find it. And then it will say, that was A. Now I don't know why this bracket right here has decided to make a jump for it. Let's put that down there. So there you go. It goes and checks if A contain, if words contains an A. And if it does, it says that was an A. If anything else than A is in words, if we put in a B, It'll say console right line and then that was not a okay so uh let's test that out so it goes down here it says enter one or anything else so we will enter one just for now it will say that was one and then we'll say enter a or else and then we'll enter an a and it'll go that was a now you see that works brilliantly for this purpose and yes this is very simple uh, but if you're doing a program along, I don't know what you're doing, uh, then you might want to try this out. Give it a few tries to do a little double, double if sentence. And if that works out for you, you got it nailed. Now, uh, it'll say, press enter to continue. That's why it's control right now. Press. That's why this is a console right line and then press enter to continue. Then I'll take an input, doesn't store it anyway, and then we'll do a new command that I haven't taught yet. It's called console clear and then parenthesis, and then semicolon. What this does is it goes in and it just clears the entire console just for the purpose of actually being able to visualize what is literally happening because a lot of things can be happening and it will just continue writing down. So sometimes you'll need to do a little clearing of what you've already been writing out on your screen. So a console line is a brilliant, or console clear is a brilliant way to do that. Now, the other thing that we're gonna be discussing today is switch. Now a switch is like an if sentence, but it's a more specific one. Now what we do here is we say console write line, and it will say write A or B. And whatever you write here will be stored in the string called words. So we take an input as in the control write line, we again convert it to upper, to uppercase, and then we do something called a switch. Now we write out switch, and then in parenthesis, we write out the string or int that we want to check. Now in this case we want to check the words. Now it is the same for an if. We go to the if and we write out if and in parenthesis you write out the int or string that you wish to check. Now down to string again. 
we wanted to check words and then we put in these brackets just to say this is this is the switch okay so we go down and we say case as in in case it's an a which is in words and then a normal colon and then in console right line it'll just write out case a and then to end this now you could do whatever in here you could put in another if sentence you could do anything in here and you could literally make it do anything okay then to end this we do a break and this is a semicolon that stops this case that ends it so the switch goes in and because we've chosen it to look into the string called words it will look into words and it'll say in case it contains an a as in in quotes and a neuricular colon it'll do whatever commits after this and then we say break and a semicolon to end this to make sure that it stops that it doesn't continue and then we go down and say or in case it contains a b <clears throat> now in case it contains a b it'll just go down and say console right line and then case b and then break again and then we end these brackets right here so that was a little bit about ifs and else and also about switches now this i hope didn't confuse you you might want to try it out yourself uh, it is rather simple and uh, once you get the hold of it you can make it do a lot of things now going down uh, we're going to be discussing some loops so after the switch that we have above here he goes down and says console right line and it says press enter to continue this is just a to make sure that i know what to do once i get into this program because sometimes programming this way is very confusing when you don't know what to do when it's just a blank read line you don't know if you're supposed to put in something this just flat out just says just press enter for god's sake <laughs> and it'll clear out your console and then we're ready to discuss the do while okay so we declare a new int as in an integer as in something to put in words and this time we declare it with a value already now the value already is zero okay so we go down and we say do and then do these brackets to say do whatever is in this while answer is different from 42 so if it is anything else that we put into the int call answers if it's anything else than 42 it will just repeat this if it is 42 it will stop repeating and it'll go down to the next line of code whilst it is not 42 and still zero as in the first time you boot this up it will say console right line and then the answer is 42 and then give you a blank line to just put in whatever you wish now as we discussed earlier about how to put in numbers into an integer we do the same thing here we say the answers as in the integer that we just declared up here is the same as or is equal to whatever is after here so so it says convert to int 32 and then parenthesis and then read line so whatever we put in will be converted into int format and then put into answers and then it will check the answers to see if they are different from 42 if they're different from 42 it'll go up and it'll say the answer is 42 it'll just repeat whatever's in these brackets over and over and over again so let's actually do this so we'll say console dot clear because i've kind of forgot that let's put it in a clear here so it'll write it out the first time it'll clear out your console it'll write the answer is 42 and then it'll go down and check if it's different from 42 what you put in and it'll do it again and it'll clear it so it'll clear out the last thing it read out so if it's already written it it'll just read it out on a blank console so it's very nice to look at now once you've put in the number 42 it'll go down and it'll say console right line and then it'll say done and then press enter to continue and again it will say a read line doesn't put it anywhere and just to clear now we're going to be discussing another thing another loop this is called a for loop now a for loop consists of three values they can be of different ints they have to be integers so for my example of a for loop i just made an int called a so i go in and i say for i declare it that way and then in parenthesis you put in a calculation like this so you say the int called a is zero then semicolon as long as a is less than five and then semicolon a plus plus that just means it'll add one to a every time it does this and it'll do it 
until a is 5. So we'll do it as long as a is less than 5. So we'll write it out 5 times because it starts from 0. So what happens here is we declare a new int, call it a, set the value to 0. We say do this whatever is in these brackets as long as a is less than 5 and then it'll add 1 every time. So the first number will be 0, then 1, and I'll do it again, then 2, and then 3, and then 4, and then it'll stop. And it'll stop because it knows it has to be less than 5. It doesn't... We could say less than or equal to 5, and then it will do the fifth as well. But we don't want that. We just want it to be less than. And then it'll write out, after a period of time, which is about 600 milliseconds, uh, which is not a long time. It'll just do a little pause and then it'll write out the next number and then the next number and it'll write out the value of A. This is a little pause. Uh, this is quite a complicated thing to remember. It's called system.threading.thread.sleep and then parenthesis the amount of time you want it to sleep. Now I set the value to 600. So let's go in and check this out. So as we see here, it has just cleared my console and then we're ready to do this switch. Now the switch says write A or B. Now if I put in anything else than that, it will fail. It will only take these values. You can do a do while, so in case it does anything else than that, it will just go back. Now I'm just going to put in an A just to demonstrate this. Now if we say A and then press enter, it will say case A. And then it will drop down because it has already done this, so it has checked our string called words and it's seen that it contains an A and then it breaks it sees okay that's done that's all done and then it ends it exits from the brackets so it quits and it's like okay next line and next line is press enter to continue so we press enter and it clears out okay so now it says the answer is 42 so that's just for fun just type in uh, uh, just uh, 24 Okay, so we'll do it again. We can go 12, we can go 2 and 3, and it will just keep going and keep going until we type in 42. Now let's do that. 42. It will just say done, press enter to continue. So it did exactly what I wanted it to do. It set the value to 0, and then it says the answer is 42, and it takes our input, which was 12 and 2 and 3 and whatever. It stopped immediately as I entered 42. And then it exits and it goes done press enter to continue and that will then we'll read line and then it'll clear and then we're ready to do a for loop okay so the for loop is going to happen immediately so we want it to be ready and then i'll explain it as it goes so there you go it'll write a one two three four and then done so it read out five times that's all the five times so in the beginning it will not add and at the end it will see that it is less than five now it is still less than 5 and it sees if I add more, it will be 5, so it won't add any more. And as you see, it read out 5 times and it dropped out of the for loop and it says done. So that is a very simple way of making something repeat a number of times for a very specific amount of time. And in this case, it was 5 times and it worked completely and brilliantly. So thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope this was in any way helpful to you at all. If it was, then a rating would be much appreciated. So if you have any questions or any problems with any software that you're working on, then please send a question to me, I will answer them all. And if you have any cool ideas for projects you would like to see, then please let me know, I will get to them and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.